So, you know, I'm looking at guitar porn <laughs> late at night, <laughs> as you do. Oh, man, that was dangerous. Showing the colourful Telecasters. Vintage Blonde 50s, £329. I need it. Sonic Blue, Vintage Blonde, Olive Green. I need them all. It's a double bound Telecaster Custom in Olive Green. Click buy. <laughs> I'm so excited, I'm all over the place. Let's get stuck in, let's do it. Let's get on with it. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Guitaristas. So yeah, Telecaster time again this week. Great response from last week's review of the GNL, which was the first in a series of affordable Telecasters that we're going to eventually compare. And as I told you last week, I also got this Squire Classic Vibe, FSR, which is Fender Special Run, 60s in olive green, which I'm very excited about. So I couldn't wait. I thought, let's get stuck in. Let's do it. Let's get on with it. So that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to review it, you know take it apart and everything and measure it all up and poke it around and, and then have a play and talk about it and see what it's like. I'm in love with it already, to be honest with you, just from the, the look. I mean, wow. Which is really why I bought this. Um, I saw it on a Anderton's website. So, you know, I'm looking at guitar porn <laughs> late at night, <laughs> as you do. I saw they'd released a range of FSR classic vibes, uh, which um, excited me. I, I saw the first one I saw was this, the, the Danish Pete influenced or inspired one in a metallic, what is it, metallic purple. £329, get out of here. We know classic vibes are good, don't we, guys? You know, we've, we've had some before and we do get excited about classic vibes because they're you know they're kind of it. You know they're difficult to to difficult to criticise. Well, I think anyway at, at that kind of price point. So these funky colours. So I saw that one, and then lo and behold, this one popped up. A little bit more expensive, three hundred and ninety nine pounds. This, but it's a double bound Telecaster Custom in olive green. Click buy. <laughs> so here it is. Um, yeah, I'm very excited. And, and obviously, as I said last week, this is going to be part of a series. Last week, we reviewed the GNL ASAT. <laughs> Sorry, loads of comments saying it's ASAT. It's not arse hat. It's, it's ASAT. Thanks, everyone. It's, you know, it's just British, isn't it? <laughs> I call it ASAT, right? <laughs> Anyway, sorry, I'm waffling already. So, the uh, <laughs> incidentally, timestamps are in the description box. So if you if you if you get a bit fed up with me just doing all that, skip forward to something else, the measurements or the playing or something. Okay. Um, so let's get on with it. So, yeah, <sighs> classic vibe FSR Telecaster. This morning I started to do a little bit of research. On a bit more research on this because as I say it was a bit of an impulse buy and um, <laughs> it was quite dangerous to be honest with you so I went you know I'm, I'm googling it you know FSO what, what different colours and stuff oh man that was dangerous so this is what I found this morning um, I'm going to look at my notes because there's a few this range this Squire Classic Vibe FSR limited edition range it's not available everywhere. Hopefully you guys in the States can get it. Get them. There's, there's a couple of places in the UK that I see have got them. Uh, two or three, actually. You know, Gack in Brighton and Andertons and Guitar Guitar. All right, get this. 
So, so this 60s one, the 60s uh, are not the custom. I think this is the only custom which is double bound. We're going to get to the specs in a minute, I promise, all right? But this double bound kind of, that's kind of the hallmark of the Telecaster, the original Telecaster custom. Um, but 60s Telecaster, they also do in shell pink. What was that? £399. And uh, metallic purple, as I said. And the 50s version, this got this, I nearly wet myself when I saw this. Vintage blonde, 50s vintage blonde. £329, that was on offer at, at Gack in Brighton, I think it was. Uh, that's tricky. I, I nearly bought it, and I, I don't really know why. Um, <laughs> apart from the fact that I've always thought that about Telecasters, they're kind of, they're just, they're like, <laughs> they're like sweets. It's like, you, why not have them in different colours? Sweets is not a good analogy. But it is what I did, what I just said. But you know, all the all these different shiny colours. I've used the magpie eyes thing before. Shiny, colourful telecasters, vintage blonde fifties, three hundred and twenty nine pound. I need it. And then, of course, Sonic Blue, three hundred and seventy nine pounds. But burgundy mist, not not so much my my particular kind of colour but sonic blue vintage blonde olive green I need them all um, I resisted only I resisted by the vintage blonde one only because I thought I can't really review a Squire <laughs> FSR Telecaster you know two weeks running can I so I haven't bought it yet but you know the <laughs> it's still the morning so we'll see what happens Anyway, sorry about that. A bit of waffle, but we've covered some prices or some colours and prices. So there is a little bit of info for you. If you fancy a cracking affordable Telecaster, and these are close classic vibes, so they've, they're kind of vintage correct, that they've got the traditional ashtray bridges. These are actually chrome saddles on this one. Um, which is kind of um, representative, that's the word I was looking for, of the 60s. They used steel uh, rather than brass saddles in on 60s Telecasters. And uh, so these are like chrome, proper ashtray bridge, um, vintage Cluson style tuners with the pressing bushings, you know. So, you know, proper kind of thoughts gone into this. And this apparently has got narrow, tall frets as well. It's got a nine and a half ra inch radius board, so it's it's a little bit more playable. I'm not sure. I'm not sure when they changed the radius. Originally, tellies at fifties ones, you know, to be to be correct. You know, I'm not sure of, of of the eras, but originally there were seven and a quarter inch radius boards, which a lot of people don't like because they're you know. They're harder to play, but I don't, to be honest with you, I don't care. I just, you know, all sorts, really. I just like Telecasters. This has got quite a thin neck on this. Um, we're going to go into the measurements at the moment. What you might have noticed is I'm so excited today that I've just, I've got on with it, basically. I've already covered the ashtray bridge, the tuners, the, uh, the, the frets. Let's just rein it back in a little bit and, and go back to the stuff that I should have been it should have been in order, look I've got notes here but it's not so uh, hopefully it works let's get back on track some some more specs so the body on this is is, is made of a wood called Nyato um, sourced in Asia I understand and uh, uh, olive green it's a poly polyurethane finish obviously but it's bloody gorgeous, if you like olive green, that is. And I do, very much so. It's just, it's a fabulous looking guitar. It's a really nice, nice kind of green. It's, it, it almost looks grey in certain lights. Uh, it'd be interesting to see. These cameras are fairly good 
with their colour match, unless it's red. <laughs> red is problematic for some reason uh, on cameras, but that's that's probably something for a different channel, isn't it? This green's gorgeous, and it does look a little bit grey in certain lights. I love it, and double bound. It's very attractive. And just, it's perfect. The finish is just fantastic. It's just really gorgeous. And of course, the necks on Squire guitars, classic vibes in particular, they have this vintage tint. which likewise is just absolutely gorgeous. It's got quite a slim neck on this. So I think what we'll do now is we'll dive in and we'll look at the neck profile and measurements. Here's the neck profile and measurements at the first fret. And here's the neck profile and measurements at the 12th fret. You can see the sort of the flattish profile there. It feels, it felt quite shallow immediately when I picked it up. I've had this at home all weekend playing it and it's certainly something I got used to very, very quickly and was a joy to play, really. No problems with the frets or anything. And, you know, I bend quite a lot, you know. Well, I don't know if narrow at all helps or hinders that. Anyway, I had no, no issues with this at all. The only thing I noticed about this um, or say probably the only thing, or one of the things I noticed about this was the nut quite sharp. You can hear that. It's quite a sharp edge there, which you can feel if you if you go too far. Um, so it's a bone nut. Did I say that? Well, I've said it again. It's a bone nut. And... Um, yeah, Indian laurel fingerboard. Sorry, I might be repeating myself, but I'm so excited. I'm all over the place. You know, you might not have been paying attention the first time anyway. So there you go. Um, that's good. Uh, it's a nice it's a nice weight as well. Let's, uh, let's actually weigh it and see what it is. Right, here we go. It's a decent weight. Not overly heavy like the last classic vibe telly I had. What is it? Seven pound twelve ounces. Oh, three point five three kilograms. Nice. Okay, let's get these strings off and we'll have a closer look at the frets and stuff and underneath the hood. <laughs> oh <laughs> look, all the uh, string ferrules appear to have come out with the strings. <laughs> okay, it's interesting. So what we know is the string ferrules are not a very good fit. Oh, I've never had that happen before. Every one of them. Ah. Okay. Right. So I was going <laughs> to, I was going to say, it's a string three body and these are the ferrules. Oh, look, I've cut myself on a string end. Um, so yeah, that really, that has never happened to me. Ever, I don't think. Oh, I've got blood on the guitar now. Hang on, I should get a tissue. Okay. Um, as I was saying, yeah, that's never happened to me. So anyway, they're not a very good fit, those. So if you get one of these and you're restringing at home, be warned. Because <laughs> if one of those rolls under the sofa, that'll ruin your day. Right, let's put those... There, out the way, until we require those again. Okay, so let's have a closer look at the uh, the frets. Um, now, I did I did notice when I was playing it that I couldn't feel any sharpness. I can't feel any sharpness anywhere, and there was no grinding or anything you know they were pretty well polished and set up out of the box was fine i was just thinking you know i never i never set guitars up 
I, I don't think, if, I'm, saying, I'm not saying never, because I'm sure I have, but very rarely, with the sort of guitars that I suppose we buy here, you know, Squires and Epiphones, mainly, <laughs> just because I, what I like, I suppose, there are, well, we had GNL last week, so what am I talking about? You know, I didn't have to set that up, I didn't have to set this up, I just, I just play them. Um, you do, you know, I, I hear a lot of comments from people, <sighs> mostly, mostly they are complimentary about these, these things, but I do, you do also hear comments, people saying, oh, you know, oh, I needed to do the frets and everything. I don't know if they're just particularly fussy or, or unlucky, but anyway, the point is this one out of the box, absolutely playable. So I haven't done a lot of, or anything plugged in actually yet with this. I think I might have mucked around at home briefly, but um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what it sounds like. Um, anyway, look, here's a close up of the, the frets. They're great. No problem. And it says narrow tall, but they don't seem particularly narrow or especially narrow or tall, <laughs> as far as I can tell. They seem, if, if, if you were to ask me what these frets were, I'd say, well, they look like medium jumbo frets to me. So don't be put off by that description. Yeah, slim neck, as I, as I say, if, you know, if you really don't like slim necks, this is obviously the 60s version, the classic vibe, and, and slimmer necks were the thing in the 60s, weren't they? Um, whereas 50s, you know, obviously if you like a fatter neck, you know, I might, I might have to go and get that 50s one now, mightn't I, just to compare. You see, that's dangerous. I've just given myself a reason. What's the difference between a 50s and a 60s classic vibe? It's another film. Yeah, it's got worth thinking about. Uh, anyway, sorry, can't help it. There you go. Yeah, next good fingerboard. Yeah, it looks a bit dry. Indian laurel. Play it a bit and the oil from your fingers, or play it a lot, and the oil from your fingers will make that look a bit, a bit nicer or put a little bit of lemon oil on it or whatever it is you like to use. Um, but, it, you know, it looks all right. Don't look bad, does it? Very cool. And the custom, sorry, I am all over the place today, but I'm just going to carry on regardless. The custom Telecaster, incidentally, this, the original custom tele Telecaster television, just to check and see if I've stopped bleeding. <laughs> the, the original custom Telecaster, double bound, which is really how you identify the custom Telecaster, was, was made from 1959 right up until 1972, when they changed it to the, well, let's call it the Telecaster Custom then, which is the one with the, uh, the big old wide range humbucker. That's the 72 Custom, which they made then until 1981. But this was the original Custom Telecaster, uh, as it says on the headstock there. I've never had one of these before. I always think that tellies with this Binding look fantastic, and I've always wanted one actually. Always fancied a. a well, I was going to say a black one. Yeah, um, the black with the with the the double binding looks fantastic. But anyway, when I saw this, I bought great and these classic vibes for three hundred ninety nine pound. They they tick all the boxes. Uh, and you can buy another one or two for the cost of the USA version. I've been playing this and it's great. Feels great. Feels like, feels like a proper Telecaster. Right, so that's that. That's that. That's done. Pickups. These are a Fender designed Alnico single coil pickups. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove this parchment three ply guard. Got that in as well. Uh, and we'll have a look underneath and I'll pop the ashtray bridge up as well and the control plate, and we'll have a look under there and see what's going on. Uh, 
There we go. What we can see on the the pickups is lots of gobbledygook. Um, the only the only thing I can work out is it says vibe. Uh, or oh, oh. oh, rear, actually rear, because on that one it says um, vibe BLK black, black. It's not black, is it? Well, it's got a black bottom, but it's got a silver top. F, so mate, that's front maybe. And that looks like a nice um, brass plate, doesn't it? Now I can see on this as well that it's earthed to the brass plate. Um, oh, it's also earthed there. That's interesting. Well, I say, I think it's earthed to the brass plate. I'm guessing that's what that is. But it's definitely earth there as well. Um, and what you can see here is this is routed for a humbucker. So that's interesting. Where it might be, if you were considering getting one of these and modding it with a humbucker, you can. There's no identification marks on these at all. Oh, I can just about see. I'm just going to stick another light on. I still can't really make out what that cap is. Maybe that camera will pick it up. It's better than my eyes. Anyway. That's that. Got a random bit of blue wire cut off there for no no obvious reason. Switch says CF. It feels okay. There you go. I'm going to screw it all back together now and then we'll actually uh, take some pickup readings. Right, so let's start with the bridge pickup. 6.97 kilo ohms. The inductance is reading 3.09 Henry's and then on the rhythm or neck pickup 7.13 kilo ohms and the inductance is 2.03 Henry's hmm there you go and uh, in the middle anyway for those that care 3.57k okay right i think what we'll do now is we'll put a new set of strings on and plug it in and see what it sounds like let's do that see you in a minute That's what it sounds like unplugged. It's quite nice. I think it's got a little bit of a, it's quite bright. It's quite a tinny sort of sound. I'm going to describe it as um, not, I think it might be because of the, the chrome saddles as opposed to brass, which is a little bit warmer. And I think this has just got, got a certain brightness to it. Well, that might be nice when it's plugged in. Let's give it a try and see, shall we? I'm using the Princeton 65 again because, well, because it works with everything really. And it, and it also puts, 
I suppose all the guitars that I'm reviewing on a on an even footing. Um, and that's my excuse anyway. The real reason is because it saves arsing around, mucking around with amps every week. And it sounds good. It's cranked, as you know. I've got the, the, the volume on about eight because it's attenuated via the aux attenuator. And it sounds, it sounds pretty good with everything. Let's see what it sounds like with this. Um, on the board, I've got a spark booster and a rat on the board today because I fancied it. You'll see if I use them or not because I shall tread on them and show you via Crocs cam. Right, stop talking. What does it sound like? It's rolled off a little bit to start with. Nick.
There you go. Sounds all right, doesn't it? I thought so. Great guitar. Really good guitar. Plays great. Sounds great. Sounds like a Telecaster. Yeah. Very little to criticise about this. Very little. Um, what can I criticise about it? I mentioned a bit of a sharp edge there, which is kind of nothing really, isn't it? All of the, the frets. Super. Oh, yeah. You know what? I, <laughs> I have got something to criticise. The... Um, it's funny, actually. In fact, there's two things that I have stated in this film earlier that um, I'm just going to backtrack on a little bit. Okay, first off, I said, <laughs> I, I think I said something like, I rarely, if ever, set a guitar up. I never need to, which is pretty much true. I, I get a guitar out of the box and I play it, and muck around with it and stuff and if I notice anything's wrong then I'll fix it I'll adjust the action if it needs it the intonation I generally I don't generally check it because it's um you can hear it I think if it's out and I heard this was out when I, as soon as I plugged it into the amp and I started playing it sound right and if it's if it's far enough out you'll you'll hear it if your ears are, you know, yeah, if your ears are trained at all, you will hear it. It's got really weird harmonics and stuff when you start strumming chords. It, it's, you know, it, it's in tune, but it's not. It's just something going on. So I checked it and it was way out, actually. So I had to adjust the intonation on this one. However, I will also say that you saw me take the strings off and, and unscrew the bridge and, and put it back and put a new set of strings on. That in itself could could be the reason why it's it's out again. Because when you change strings, you should, they say you should check your intonation. I never do, but they say you should. And again, screwing the bridge back on. I mean, it can only can only really go in one place. The screws were all straight and everything. So, but it might have been that. So, anyway, just thought I'd mention that. And the other thing, <laughs> I'm going to try and show you this. Uh, Gonna have to put just put that camera on because I left it off. Right, the other thing I'm gonna backtrack on is I've said so many times how much these tuners are great. Occasionally, um, occasionally they're they're problematic. Now, what I noticed with this one, I'm gonna have to find out which one it is. It's this one straight away on the D string. Can you see that? That's play. That's play in the string. In the uh, tuners. Right, sorry, not the string. There you go. Let's get, let's get that. See that? Nothing's happening. It does work, but if you loosen it, it's got this amount of free play in it, which is annoying. I mean, it does hold tune, but it's annoying. I will say, though, it's, that's happened to my Gibson Custom Shop R4 which cost roughly 10 times this, this, the amount that this cost me. Same look, same sort of tuners. I mean, presumably the ones on that are more expensive, but it did exactly the same it, on a couple of the strings. And actually, I've, I've changed those now because it annoyed me. Um, actually, I made a film, a little extra film on the TV channel doing that. So uh, check that out. There's the, there's the oh, quick plug for the TV channel. There you go. Check that out. 30 days free helps to support the channel, this channel, and uh, keep it sponsorship free. Uh, and you can watch all of these films without adverts on there. And there's a few little extras like 
me changing the tuners on my custom shop R4. So anyway, little plug there. Yeah, that's that's a little thing. I think it was only the D string on this. But um, so yeah, a couple of little couple of little niggly things wouldn't wouldn't affect your enjoyment playing it if if you'd bought it. Wouldn't stop you playing it. Stays in tune. Intonation. You know, you should learn how to check that anyway. Um, but apart from that, sound wise, thought it was great. And the controls were good. I think they all worked. You saw me going through the the volume control and cleaning it up nicely. And the tone control worked as well. And um, it all felt good. I thought the pickup sounded great. Hard to say at this point how they compare to, say, the GNL that we did last week or um, the ones that we've got coming up. And that's the whole point, I suppose, of the comparison that we're going to do. So we can compare. These are Fender design pickups, so they should be great. Uh, I, I do definitely get the impression. I said last week, actually, that, that you know, this kind of price point now, the, well, this is £400. It used to be that you wouldn't expect much for that, but I think times have changed and we should expect great stuff for that. And we're getting it here. We're getting it. The GNL was great. Same sort of price point. Next week, maybe next week, I might skip it and do something else next week, but either next week or the week after, it will be this. This is the Tokai. The breezy sound. Do you remember them, chaps? This is a Chinese Tokai. Again, same price point, 450 quid, I think. Um, I'm going to bring this in, next in line, and several more. I've managed to resist getting another Squire Classic Vibe this week, so far anyway. So uh, I've got my eye on, a, I think it's a vin the vintage, I think it's a V, I don't know what its model is, but it's the vintage Telecaster, the classic one. Vintage the brand, that is. And... Some others. Uh, fender player. I'm going to get a fender player in. Going to get a fender player because that is what this these are competing. Well, are they competing? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, this has got a lot going for it in its own right. To be honest with you. But anyway, let's find out. Let's find out. Let's find out what else I get, and let's find out how they compare. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Come back next week. Might be the Tokai next week. Might be something else. I haven't decided yet. So come back. Same time, same place. And um, yeah, let's find out together. It doesn't make sense, does it? Because I will know at that point. But come back, same time, same place next week. And you find out. I'll see you then and I will look forward to it. Cheers for now. Ta-da.